What's up guys, I am Black Ops Amazing, welcome back to another Zombies video where today we are looking at the story of Stanley Ferguson Brutus from Mob of the Dead. If you do go on to enjoy the video, make sure you leave a like rating. Could we hit the like goal of 6,666 likes? 6666 for the special map Mob of the Dead. Don't forget to subscribe for more Zombies videos and without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Here we go. Before working at Alcatraz Prison, Stanley Ferguson had a wife. He also had a son with his wife called Tommy. Stanley, being a betting man and enjoying taking on new challenges, decided to change profession and work as a prison guard on Alcatraz Island, located in San Francisco, USA. And so in the year 1933, Stanley got the job as prison guard, where every night at 9.30, Stanley would begin his nightly routine of patrolling the prison, making sure that all of the prisoners were locked tightly in their cells and that no one had escaped or was misbehaving. And after doing this same routine every night for a few months, Stanley began to get closer and know personally some of the inmates. The four inmates he specifically knew about were Sal DeLuca, Billy Hansom, Albert Arlington and Michael Finn O'Leary, all who had been imprisoned on Alcatraz around about a year before Stanley started working as the prison guard. And as the days went by, Stanley would begin to learn things about these four inmates. He knew that Sal was the mob boss, the leader of the group, and so would treat him with a little more respect. He knew that Finn, who was convicted of 16 counts of gambling fraud, could give tips on races and other events to do with gambling. So every night, Stanley would provide Finn with a newspaper for him to read to keep him entertained, and in return, Finn would give Stanley tips on betting for him to win more money. Since Billy Hansen was convicted of 116 counts of murder, Stanley, because of his anger, would tend to stay out of his way. And then there was Arlington, whose nickname was the Weasel, where most nights he would play up, either put an act on or do something to annoy Stanley. But as the days and days went on, Stanley got to know all of the inmates inside of the prison. But actually, whilst all of this was going on, Albert Arlington was devising a makeshift plan to escape Alcatraz. In his cell, he had drawn up what he thought was a foolproof plan. And on the night of December 31st, 1933, not long after Stanley had been working here, Arlington decided that this was the night for them to escape. And so, somehow, Finn, Arlington, Sal, and Billy Hansen escaped their prison cells. Now it's unknown how they escaped, but it is thought that one of the four, more than likely Albert Arlington, used a spoon from the cafeteria, dig away at the walls of his prison until he had a hole big enough to crawl through. He would then, on the night of December 31st, 1933, steal the keys from the warden's office. Since it was New Year's Eve, since fireworks were going off all around the surrounding area, it was very difficult to hear noise in the prison, and so this meant Arlington could easily steal the warden's keys. He would then go on to unlock the prison cells of his other three inmates, leaving them to now move on to stage two. As for where the prison guard was, we don't know. We don't know what time it was when they escaped. We don't know where Stanley Ferguson was, whether at this time he was making a brew, whether he wasn't on duty at this time, or maybe he was at the other side of the prison, which was part of his routine to go around all of the prison, checking the cells were closed and that the prisoners were still in there. And just maybe at this time, he had gone past this crew and was attending to some other prisoners. We don't know. However, they escaped from their cells. Step two of the weasel's plan to escape was to build a makeshift aircraft on the top of the prison. However, Finn, Sal, Bill, and Al couldn't agree on how they were going to build this. Arlington had told them he had the whole plan set out, that he knew exactly what they were going to do, but he didn't. Al lied. After escaping their cells, not being able to agree with each other, the crew fell out, and they blamed this on Arlington. He was the one who was supposed to have devised this plan that got the other characters to agree with his escape plan in the first place. The set of characters now not knowing what to do decided that Arlington had betrayed them, or at least that's how Sal saw it. Sal was this big time gangster who wanted everything done how he liked it. And Arlington having let these characters down, Finn, Billy and Sal decided if they were going to escape from the prison, since now there was no way back since they had escaped their cells, they decided if they were going to escape, the only way for them to successfully do this was to first get rid of Arlington. 
they decided that he was a liability and could ruin their chances of escaping. So using prison weapons that they had created, they pretended to agree to Arlington's plan to go up to the rooftop and build an aircraft to fly off the roof of the prison. So the crew followed Arlington as he led them to the roof. But instead of attempting to build the plane, the crew beat Arlington. Using the weapons, the knives they had created in the prison, they stabbed him, they beat him, leaving Arlington to bleed to death on the rooftop of Alcatraz. With the weasel dead and Finn, Billy and Sal not having an escape plan set, Stanley Ferguson, back down in the cells, soon made it back around to the beginning of his routine only to find out that all four of the inmates were not in their cells. So he activated the alarm and quickly the four inmates were found. Arlington was found dead on the roof, whilst Finn, Billy and Sal were all recaptured. Because of their participation in the escape and the murder of Arlington, just 19 days after their recapture, on the morning of January 19th, 1934, Billy Hansen, Sal DeLuca and Finn O'Leary were put to death by electric chair. After the death of the four inmates, Stanley Ferguson continued to work at Alcatraz as the prison guard for eight more years, where he saw many other escape plans, but none of them were as audacious as the ones by the crew on the night of 19. 33. Ferguson decided to retire as prison guard at Alcatraz eight years after their death in 1942. After his retirement and going back to his wife and kid, Ferguson decided to go on and tell his stories of Alcatraz. He told his stories to anyone who wanted to know. The most famous one he told was about the four Mob of the Dead inmates and about how they fell out and ended up all being killed. One of the people he told his story to was a reporter who had been sent to him by Mr. Rapt. We think that Mr. Rapt is the shadow man, the person in the shadows who was sending this reporter to all different locations from Russia to Morgue City and he now sent the reporter to Stanley Ferguson to hear about his story. And that's what Ferguson would go on to do for the rest of his life. Tell his stories of what happened at Alcatraz. My name is Stanley Ferguson. I was a guard at Alcatraz from 1933 to 1942. Today, I'm going to give you some insight into one of the more interesting tales from the prison's history. Over the decades, Alcatraz has seen more than its fair share of daring escape attempts. However, few were as audacious as the one undertaken by four inmates on New Year's Eve, 1933. Thought to be the brainchild of an inmate by the name of Albert Arlington, the outrageous scheme was as unlikely as its mastermind. It's believed that Arlington, a.k.a. the Weasel, somehow convinced three other inmates that he had devised a foolproof plan to escape the rock. It was a plan that would see them literally taking to the skies on a makeshift aircraft of Arlington's own design. Just how the Weasel managed to convince these hardened criminals that such a plan was even possible remains a mystery to this day. What is known is that no such plane was ever built. Instead, the group's plans for freedom soon descended into bitter argument and infighting. With the plan falling apart, anger and frustration would ultimately lead to a brutal altercation between the misguided Arlington and his former co-conspirators. Armed only with makeshift weapons, Finn O'Leary, Sal DeLuca, and Billy Hansen lured the unsuspecting Arlington to the roof, where they intended to exact a bloody and violent revenge. And so it was here, beneath the dark and stormy winter skies, that the hapless Arlington met his grisly end, bleeding to death on the cold concrete roof. For their participation in the murder, the three collaborators were sent to death by electric chair. Justice came swiftly. On the morning of January 19, 1934, the execution order was carried out. Now whilst that's what happened in real life, we know that this isn't the end of Ferguson. In fact, back to the night of New Year's Eve, December 31st, 1933, when the inmates escaped their prison cells and then Al was killed on the rooftop. After the death of all four inmates, they were sent back in time to the night of December 31st, 1933, but this time in an alternate iteration 
of Alcatraz prison. The characters were sent back and trapped in purgatory, a place of suffering which was inhabited by souls of the sinners. Because our four characters had committed sins previously before coming to Alcatraz, murders, cons, robberies, they have been sent back to purgatory, a satanic iteration of Alcatraz. The satanic iteration of Alcatraz is in fact what we see in the intro cutscene. With their memories erased and no memory of what previously happened in them, killing Arlington on the rooftop, once again on the night of December 31st, 1933, the crew decide that this is the night to escape from the prison. And so the same events go down. At 9.30, the lights of the prison cells are turned off and the guard, Stanley Ferguson, begins his nightly routine. Walking around Alcatraz, making sure that every prisoner is locked tightly in their cell. Ferguson checks on Sal, he checks on Finn, he checks on Billy, the usual characters, but this time, Arlington has a different method of escaping. This time, Arlington pretends to be ill. In his cell, he pretends he's come down with sickness and tells Ferguson, the prison guard, that he needs to get the doctor quickly. But Ferguson, knowing who the weasel is, after, you know, being a guard at this prison for a few months, he knows that the weasel is a con artist, that's his speciality, so says, Luke Weasel, I know you're pretending, I know you're faking, so this time it's gonna be the real deal. He unlocks the weasel's prison cell, gets his baton out, and goes to beat him. But actually, the weasel wasn't ill. This was part of his escape plan. Whilst he was crunched up pretending to be sick, he was hiding a knife. When Ferguson entered the weasel's cell, the weasel got up and stabbed Ferguson to death. With Stanley Ferguson now dead, the weasel stole his keys and freed the other three inmates. Just like previously, once they had escaped their cells, the crew's next step was to build the plane on the roof of the prison. But before they could talk about how they were going to do this and their satanic iteration, suddenly, because Al had killed Ferguson, he turned. Ferguson had become a zombie. The crew were confused. They didn't know that Ferguson was a zombie. They didn't know why he was alive. Al said to the other crew that he killed him, but he was confused when he got up. And so, using the guns they had stolen from the warden's office, killed the zombified, satanic version of Ferguson. But, this wasn't the end of their nightmare. As we know, in this satanic version of Alcatraz, all of the other inmates turned into zombies. The crew tried to fight them off, but eventually, they became overrun and killed. After being killed once again in Alcatraz, this time by the zombies, the group were then sent back again to Alcatraz on the night of 1933. But this time, they were stuck in afterlife. A life after death. The crew were now stuck in a loop on Alcatraz. Although they didn't know it, they had been here before and every time they had been killed, their memories were erased and they were sent back to the night of 1933 to the very beginning. And so once again, just like the original plan, the crew set out to build Arlington's plane. Only in afterlife, because it's not reality, the crew managed to build the plane. In reality, this plane would have never flown, but in afterlife, it does. The crew build the plane. As we know, the plane crashes into the Golden Gate Bridge, where eventually the four mobsters are killed. Where once again, they are sent back to the beginning, to the start of the prison. Where again, they set out to build the plane. With their memories erased, with them not knowing that they have built it literally just a few minutes before, they set out to build the plane, they escape, they die, they are stuck in an endless time loop. And this keeps going on and on. For the second time, they build the plane, they crash into the gate, they die on the bridge, they are sent back in afterlife to the beginning of the prison. With the mobsters attempting to escape a total number of three times, eventually they start to regain a little bit of their memory. They remember that previously they killed Arlington. Arlington remembers that previously the crew came up with an idea to betray him and they realize that actually they are stuck in some kind of satanic evil version of this prison inside of a loop and actually they realise there is no way for them to escape unless they do something different. The four inmates remember that in reality they are all dead and that actually the original escape plan never came to be and that they were all killed. So remembering that and now knowing that they seem to be stuck in some kind of loop, they set out to commit the same act that happened in reality in 1933 where Arlington was killed. And so they build the plane on the rooftop, they fly out to the Golden Gate Bridge, they crash, but this time Sal, 
Finn and Billy, remembering what they did in reality, killing Al, attempted to murder him. They attempted to kill him on the Golden Gate Bridge. If Sal, Billy and Finn manage to kill Arlington, then the loop continues. They are sent back to the very beginning and this keeps happening over and over again. They'll be stuck in Alcatraz Island forever because they've just replayed the same events that happened originally. The original events that got them sent here in the first place and got them all killed has happened once again, leaving them to be stuck in this endless loop in the afterlife. But if Arlington kills Sal, Billy and Finn, then the loop will be broken. The cycle is broken. The event that took place in reality, where Arlington was killed by the crew, this time doesn't take place, so the loop can't continue, the characters can't be sent back, and the cycle is broken. Leaving Arlington free to escape the bridge because he's the only mobster alive. Whilst this time, the other three have died. And that is the story of Mob of the Dead. But as we know, during their attempts to escape the prison in this satanic hell afterlife version, they meet a character called Brutus, who comes in to try to stop them from escaping the prison. Brutus is the prison guard of this satanic version of Alcatraz. Actually, Brutus is Ferguson in hell. When the characters killed Ferguson the first time in the satanic iteration version, and then he became a zombie, because of this, Ferguson was also sent back to the afterlife, but he became this bigger, buffed up version of himself. He became Brutus, and his job, just like it was originally in real life, was to stop them from escaping the prison. It was to patrol around and do whatever he could do to stop them. Our characters kill Brutus, but every time we kill him, he just keeps on coming back. Because this is the afterlife, and in afterlife you can't die unless you break the loop. Because Ferguson was killed originally, every time we killed the satanic version of him, Brutus, in afterlife he would just keep coming back. If we kill him, that means the loop has continued because he was killed originally, so he will just keep on respawning in, and in and in. And how do we know that Brutus is Ferguson? Well, if we listen to a few quotes, first off, when we kill Brutus, he tells us that he had a wife and he had a kid. I had a life, a wife and son. And as we know, Stanley Ferguson had a wife and he also tells us that he had a kid called Tommy. You could also hear from his quotes that Brutus has kind of like a connection to our characters. He knows them personally. Don't try to run, Billy. I was always nice to you. I'm trapped here, just like you. He knows our names, he knows kind of what we are up to, just like Ferguson kind of had a personal connection over the months that he got to know our characters and the real life version of Alcatraz. Brutus also says to our characters that I was always nice to you, especially Sal and Finn. He was generally nice to when he was the prison guard in real life. Why did you kill me? Where are you going, Weasel? And probably one of the most noticeable things is he says 9.30, lights out, God begins his route, which as we know was the routine that Stanley Ferguson did. Every time, every night at 9.30 when the lights were out, he began his routine around the prison. 9.30, God begins his route. And you also hear the characters like Sal especially saying, do you hear some of that shit that Brutus is saying? He kind of sounds like Ferguson. You hear some of the shit that thing's saying? I think it's Ferguson. What the fuck? I killed him. What's going? I killed him. And Arlington says, what the hell? I killed him, meaning he killed Ferguson. And then he realizes that he actually killed him. So not only were the four crew members sent back to afterlife when they were killed on 1933, but also Ferguson was trapped and sent back there too. Even though none of this happened in real life, in real life, as we know, the three inmates were killed by electric chair and Arlington was killed on the rooftop. And then Ferguson was never killed. He went on to live where he retired in the 1940s and went on to tell his story to people like the reporter. But in Afterlife, the characters were stuck in this loop and Stanley Ferguson was trapped and became Brutus. So there we go, guys. That is the full story of Brutus. Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Hopefully you're enjoying the story of videos as well. If you haven't already left me a like rating, then if you could please do that. If we get 6666 likes on the video, that'd be an awesome goal to hit. Make sure you have to subscribe on the channel if you want to see some more videos like this. Leave a comment in the comment section below letting me know what other characters you would like me to cover. Thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.